welcome to my kitchen and a new episode of Noreen's Kitchen Basics. Um, like I said before, I have a lot of people who tell me that they're just learning how to cook, they never learned how to cook, and my videos help them along the way. So I'm getting ready to make some cream of wheat for breakfast, and I thought, you know what, this is about as basic as it gets. Being able to make your family or your kids, yourself, a nice warm breakfast in the middle of winter is kind of an important thing to know how to do. Um, cream of wheat is one of my favorite cold weather breakfasts. You know, it's really one of those old fashioned stick to your ribs kind of deals. Um, and I like it. Of course, it's not gluten free because it's cream of wheat, but it's it's still yummy nonetheless. And it's a sometimes breakfast. And I grew up on cocoa wheat, which they don't make anymore. Which, which is, is, I think, like malto meal, isn't it? It's a chocolate version of cream of wheat, but they had their own brand. Right. And you can make your cream of wheat chocolate. You just have to do it a different way. I'll have to show you how to do that in a different video. But anyway, um, of course, the box has instructions on the side or on the back on the ratio that they want you to make it. But I have found that I like mine a little on the thicker side. And the way that they tell you to make it on the box is a little bit thin and watery. And I don't care for that because I like to add things to my cream of wheat. Most especially, I like to add butter and applesauce and cinnamon to my cream of wheat. That's what I like. And sometimes I'll throw in some dried chopped apples or other dried fruits, like raisins or what have you. But really, cream of wheat is a wonderful canvas to begin with to make your own kind of mix. You know, you could put anything you want in here. You know what I really like to put in here is um, the dehydrated apples that you get from the cannery. If you just take a couple of those and scrunch them up in your hand and throw them in the bowl, with your prepared cream of wheat, they will kind of absorb some of the moisture and they'll get really tender and delicious and add a lot of flavor. So anyway, the ratio that I use is one cup of water to a quarter cup of, of dried cream of wheat or farina. Farina is cream of wheat. Um, and you'll see that there. <clears throat> and um, so it's one, it's four to one basically. So I use a cup of water to a quarter cup of cream of wheat. Here I have four cups of water and one cup of cream of wheat. I also have a half a teaspoon of salt. And you probably see right down in the bottom there, I give it a stir. Um, <clears throat> a half a teaspoon of salt. And I find that the salt is very important because without it, you have a very flat um, cereal. The salt really does add a lot of flavor. And of course, you can leave it out if you choose not to partake of salt. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to come to a boil, and it's almost there now. But it's very important that you do it a certain way, otherwise you're going to end up with a galoppy mess, and you're going to have lots of lumps. You must use a whisk, is one thing I will say. You must use a whisk. It's the best, most effective way of dealing with um, <clears throat> the... Uh, the cream of wheat, so you don't get. Uh, I'm gonna. In fact, I'm gonna switch this because this one is a little heavy in my hand. But uh, we're almost to the boiling point, and once that starts to boil well, then we will start to stream in slowly and whisk the cream of wheat in, and we will whisk it until it becomes very thick, and then I'm gonna switch to a spoon um, because it's a little easier to stir that way once it becomes thickened, and then I'll show you. Um, when it's ready because you'll know when it's ready by the way that it starts to bubble but we're almost at that boil now it's uh yeah we're watching a pot you know what they say about that it never boils and that's worse the truth when you film it. it's true <laughs> I, I have no doubt okay we're almost there your water's not boiling until your bubbles break the surface and that is the point that we have just arrived at the waters are the, the waters the bubbles are now breaking the surface of the water and you have a full rolling boil. I'm going to turn my heat down to medium at this point and this is what you're going to want to do. Don't just dump that whole cup in there. You're going to want to gently stream your dry cream of wheat or farina into that water and whisk it because if you don't do this part like this you're going to end up with giant lumps and that's gross. Nobody likes that. And what you're going to want to do is you just want to keep whisking. Because you're going to give that 
those little wheat granules time to absorb that water and they're going to get bigger and they're going to cause it to become thicker and more viscous and you can tell as you're stirring it that that is happening and that little bit of foam is going to go away and it's going to start to dissipate and the other thing is too this is going to start to get bigger the longer you keep it on the heat it's going to start to get bigger and you're going to want to be careful because if you don't have a pot that's big enough it may boil over and I'm here to tell you getting cream of wheat off of your pots is not an easy thing to do mm -hmm. um, cream of wheat is like cement and you can overcook it you can absolutely overcook it and you can burn it and it will stick to the bottom of the pot so once you serve this what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put this pot in some cold water in your sink you're just going to want to let it sit there because eventually over a little bit of time the starches will um they'll congeal in the cold water and um and they'll be they'll release themselves from the side of the pan same with mashed potatoes um you never want to put hot water in a pot a mashed potato pot you always want to put cold water because that will help to shrink the molecule the starch molecule and it will release from the side of the pot very easily now you can see it's going to start to bubble just keep stirring it's become very thick and you'll see those bubbles are going to start to break the surface like that that is how you know your cream of wheat is done just give it another good stir I like it to be really thick that's just my own personal preference you can turn it off at any given time that you choose. If you make this and you enjoy it, you'll come to a point where you know that you like it. You can just move it off to the side. So I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes and then we'll come back and we'll serve you a bowl of hot and steamy cream of wheat. On a cold, mon a cold, on a cold January morning. It's not Monday. Yeah, not Monday. It's, it's Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Damn holidays, got me all out of <laughs> We're ready. This sat for just a few minutes while I went and I got my apples out. I'm just going to make a serving here. And there's enough there for all four of us to have some. So I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to finish fixing it. Sorry, I didn't mean to move so fast. Okay. Um, I have some dried apples from the cannery in the bottom of that bowl. And um, I'm just going to put a little butter on the top. This is just my own personal preference. Some people like to put milk on it. Rick does that. I don't like to put milk in mine. My mother used to make the cream of wheat with milk instead of water when I was growing up, and I cannot stand. I, I wouldn't touch cream of wheat for years um, because I couldn't stand the way it tasted made with the milk. I am not a big milk person. I don't drink milk. <laughs> and um, truth be told, I'm a bit lactose intolerant, not as much as I was when I was a kid, but... Um, but I do enjoy cheese and such, but uh, I don't like milk. I don't like the way it tastes. I don't like to drink it like just as a beverage. I think it's disgusting. The only other thing that I'm going to put in here is a couple of tablespoons of applesauce. And I'm going to stir that up. Again, cream of wheat is a blank canvas. You do it the way you want. You want to put cheese in there? Go for it. You want to put raisins, nutmeg, shrimp. Shrimp? No, no, no. Shrimp and grits is wrong. Is wrong. My apologies. It's not an insult to anybody who enjoys shrimp and grits, but I just think that that combination, for me, not so great. I'll give it another sprinkle of cinnamon, and that's breakfast. Cream of wheat, that's how we make it. Really easy, really hearty, very nutritious. Of course, if you're lactose intolerant, lactose, if you're gluten intolerant, you shouldn't eat it. But um, but I grew up eating it, and uh, I like it better now that I'm a grown-up. I figured out how to make it the way I like it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make cream of wheat, this is how you can do it and try it for yourself. And I hope you do try it, and I hope you love it. And thank you for visiting me in my kitchen today. And until next time, I'll see you.